It's a pleasure to be here at COFAST 2021. I'm really grateful to be part of a constructive discussion about faith in science. You know, for as long as I can remember, I've loved science. I grew up on a steady diet of National Geographic and Jacques Cousteau specials. In middle school, my life was turned topsy-turvy when I came to Christian faith, but I honestly never experienced the kind of dissonance many young Christians seem to. I always wanted to be a scientist, a physicist actually, and I learned German because I knew great physicists spoke it. Later, I realized my math skills weren't good enough to be a great physicist, and so I switched to biology. As an undergraduate leader in a local Christian student ministry at Michigan State University, it never occurred to me that science and dynamic Christian faith should be at odds. The same was true when I pursued a Master of Divinity degree. I gained a new appreciation for theology and the Bible, but I retained a love for science. That led me and my wife, Susie, back into academia at UC Berkeley, where I fell in love with studying how embryos develop. Now I've got my dream job. I'm a biology professor at a major research university. What motivates me as a Christian and scientist? Well, for me, science is an act of worship. Psalm 19 verses 1 and 2 say this, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. The creation, from the most expansive galactic clusters to the tiniest embryos, declare God's glory. God invites us to experience the same joy in discovering his masterwork as he has had in creating and sustaining it. He's saying, jump in. The water's fine. Now, taking that plunge means using the best science we can muster to understand the intricacies of God's world. Christians believe God hasn't stopped there, of course. Psalm 19 goes on to say this in verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy making wise the simple. Just as we learn different things from an artist by studying his or her art than we do by exchanging letters or email, so God has left us both his world and his word. As a Christian and a scientist, I have the marvelous opportunity to glimpse God's multi-volume story. I think making coherent connections between these two isn't always easy, but I believe it ought to lead to rapport with other Christians, with my students, and my deeply passionate scientific colleagues who are not people of faith. That's one reason I've worked hard to build bridges between the faith and science communities through the ISMA Society here at the University of Wisconsin, the Dialogue on Science, Ethics, and Religion at the American Association for the Advancement of Science, and the Biologos Foundation founded by Francis Collins. I'm looking forward to continuing the dialogue here at COFAS.